Would you like to know what is an AWS EC2 instance, an Azure Virtual Machine, or a Google Compute Engine instance? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I am the founder and CEO of GoCloud Careers, an organization that's dedicated towards building the most high performance cloud computing careers. Personally, I've been working in technology now for over 25 years, and I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for more than two decades, and I want to get you cloud hired. And part of getting cloud hired is having competency in your field. And it's not just knowing how to configure something. It's knowing what is the technology, how the technology works, how it benefits a business. Because if you're an architect, you can't design what you don't understand. And if you're a cloud engineer, you can't performance optimize what you don't understand either. So in this video, we're going to walk through virtualization. First, I will be describing virtualization, and then we will take you to our data center. We will show you how we create virtual machines in a server virtualization environment. We'll walk through what the process is so you understand hypervisors, memory management, and all the good stuff to help you build your cloud computing career. Now virtualization, or the concept of an EC2 instance, an Azure Virtual Machine, or a Google Compute Engine instance, is not new. In the late 70s, IBM had some form of virtualization for their mainframes, and in 1999, VMware came up with modern virtualization, which is exactly what's going on with those AWS EC2 instances, Azure Virtual Machines, or Google Compute Engine instances. So let's talk about what it is, how it works, and why you need to use them. And then you'll know, understand completely EC2 instances, Compute Engine instances, and Azure Virtual Machine. So what's really going on here is a long time ago, servers started to get really powerful. They had more CPU cores and more memory. And prior to that, we used to have to put one application per server. But at some point, these servers got so powerful, we could literally use multiple applications on the same server. Now, how could we create an environment where we had multiple isolated environments that were secure from each other? That was when the virtual machine was born. So what happens is a physical server, i.e. a server, the kind of server you buy from Dell or HP, has plenty of memory in today's days, maybe 128 cores, maybe four to six terabytes of RAM, and that's more than you need for a basic web application. So we'll take this server and we'll add a thin layer of software called a hypervisor. And the hypervisor just basically enables you to manage the memory and manage the CPUs to create multiple logical computers inside of a single computer, multiple computers inside of a single computer. So let's look at this graphic I've drawn for you. As you can see, we've got the server, which is actually the physical hardware. We've got that hypervisor that enables us to chop that physical server into multiple logical servers. And then we have three virtual machines. Each virtual machine is separate from each other. It runs its own operating system and it has its own application and any application system dependencies. And they can't talk to each other unless you want them to through networking. So they're secure and isolated. What happens in virtual machine A does not affect virtual machine B or virtual machine C. So in this case, we've got three virtual machines. The virtual machine on the left is my cat, Cindy. She's got a cat-based application. She's kind of the application inside of the computer. I like looking at cats, so I hope you bear with me with the cat. So we've got Cindy who's there sleeping and she's an application. Now in the middle, we have a second server or a second virtual machine on that same physical server. In this case, we have Sunny, my chief operating officer's cat. And she's there enjoying herself, running her applications. Let's say it's an HR application and she's there. Now on the right side of the screen, we've got another virtual machine. And this other virtual machine is a beautiful Maine Coon. This Maine Coon comes and talks to my cat Cindy every day, knocks on the door and waits for her to play. Literally speaking, scratches on the door, but here's the case. That cat on the right side, she's another application. Let's say she's an ERP application that businesses are using for enterprise resource planning. So you can see we've chopped one server into multiple servers. That's the basis of virtualization. Now on our demo, we're gonna be using the VMware ESXi hypervisor, but guess what? There's lots of hypervisors. Citrix has a Zen hypervisor. AWS has a Nitro hypervisor. All in all, they're basically the same things. They're chopping a physical server into a logical server. Now we're gonna demonstrate the creation of a virtual machine. We'll talk about the CPU and memory so you understand exactly what's going on under the hood. Now we've talked about what is a virtual machine. We've talked about a hypervisor. We talked about how they work. But now I wanna show you what's going on under the hood. And this way, the next time you click and launch a AWS EC2 instance, or a Google Compute Engine instance, or an Azure Virtual Machine, or an Oracle Virtual Machine, or you hear about a KVM, QEMU, or VMware Virtual Machine in a data center, 
Now you're going to know exactly what it is and what's going on under the hood. Since we're looking at our VMware ESXi hypervisor, let's look at what we see on the screen. As you can see, the hardware is made by Dell. We're dealing with a Precision Tower 7810. You can see that there's 24 CPUs, of course. And what's going on here is we've got two Xeon E52670 V3s that are all operating at 2.3 gigahertz. You can see the system has 127.92 gigs of memory, 128 gigs of RAM. Now, in the upper right corner, what you can see is the CPU utilization, which is basically zero. We love that because we've got lots of capacity left. You can see the memory is basically being used at 2%, so almost nothing, and the storage is used at 1%. So we've got basically a brand new server that we can install a lot of things on. What we're going to do here is create a virtual machine, and that way you know what's going on the next time you launch an EC2 instance of Computer Engine Access. Now, normally when you click on a virtual machine on the cloud, the good news is it's pre-built for you. It's silly easy. You click a couple buttons and it's running. Here we're going to do with the hardware. At least I'm going to show you how the virtual machine is created on the server, how the, you can choose the CPU cores and the DRAM, although these are done for you by the cloud provider. And that's why every cloud provider has their own family, and each family has various memory, CPU, and GPU options for video. So let's create a virtual machine here, and we're going to do that by creating a re registering a virtual machine. And see, we'll click Create a New Virtual Machine. Now, at this point, we're going to name it. We'll call it Mike's VM. I like to pick a name that's pretty simple, and that way I can remember it. If it was a data center, we'd use a data center naming convention. To make life silly, easy, we're going to install just a PC, and we're not even going to do the full install. I just want you to see how it will be set up and installed just like a real computer. So we'll pick Microsoft Windows, because most everybody's installed that at one point in their life. And what we're dealing with is Windows, uh, Windows 10 over here. So let's say where we see Windows 10 64-bit. Now next, what are we going to do? We're going to keep everything the same. Now in this case, we're going to choose the number of CPU cores. To make it quick, we'll just choose four. For, for, for RAM, to make it easy, we'll choose eight gigs, because we want it to be simple. And maybe we'll use 16 to make the install quickly. And then the hard disk, obviously you can see, is 32 gigs. Let's just make it a little 40, 40 just while we're at it. And then while we're at it, we'll put a, we have to put a disk, or at least a virtual disk, inside the disk, virtual disk drive so we can boot the system. Now under here with regards to the CPU, we can do a few things. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure we expose the hardware because we went to the operating system and obviously we want to make sure we can check everything. So there you go. Now the next thing we have to do at this point is just click finish. Now under the virtual machines tab, you can see we created a virtual machine. Now we're going to power on the virtual machine real quick. And when it's going to come up, we have to be very fast because we have to boot, press any key to boot from CD. And there you go. And it's going to install Windows 10 just like any other computer, except this is a computer inside of another computer. There you go. Now you know exactly what's going on under the hood with your EC2 instances, virtual, or your Oracle virtual machines, your Azure virtual machines, your Google Compute Engine instances, a KVM virtual machine, a QEMU virtual machine, and of course, a VMware ESXi virtual machine. I hope you've enjoyed this video on servers and server virtualization. We explained the concept and then walked you through actual virtualization on an actual VMware ESXi server. If you're trying to build your cloud computing career, we have some free and wonderful things going on for you. Every Thursday, we have a how to get your first cloud job webinar. And on this webinar, I'll present for an hour on Zoom and you can ask me questions for an hour so you know exactly how to get to the cloud computing career of your dreams. I am also online on YouTube three times per week, completely for free, to answer any cloud computing questions you may have, how to build your career, what to learn, et cetera, et cetera, because I want you all getting cloud hired. So please join us on any of these sessions so we, you can tell us your goals and we can help you get cloud hired. You know, almost every day one of my students gets cloud hired and it's the highlight of my day knowing somebody's life has changed by building the most elite cloud computing careers. Thank you for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Take care everyone.